Okay, so the goal of this video is to help you to be able to determine the direction that a stream is flowing based solely on the shape of the contour lines as they cross that stream. So we're not really going to be focusing on elevation or, or really any numbers here. More we're going to be looking at the shape of contour lines on a topographic map. Uh, as always, let's get started with a sample map. Uh, so here I have a pretty simple topographic map, and I can see a map scale down at the bottom. I can see a compass rose. Um, there are some different uh, contour lines with index contours and some points. Um, but what I want to focus on are these two white lines here, re which represent streams. I have a Ged stream here, and I have Nick Brook over here. And uh, my job is often to determine the direction that those streams are flowing. Now, this particular map, it's actually not terribly difficult, and I'll show you a few reasons why. First of all, you'll notice that uh, this down here is the ocean. Now, the ocean, for all intensive purposes, is going to be the lowest elevation. So whenever the ocean comes into play, the streams are going to be flowing towards it. We will never or, or very rarely see water flowing out of the ocean. Bodies of water are always going to flow downhill towards the, the ocean. Um, furthermore, I, I know that the, the elevation of the coastline, the, the bottom line here, is going to be zero. That's sea level. And if I see my next index contour up uh, around where point A is, that has an elevation of 250. So if that's 250 and the ocean is zero, well, my streams have to be flowing downhill uh, from higher elevation to lower elevation. So both of these streams here are flowing towards the ocean. Uh, now, things would change a little bit if I didn't know that that was the ocean. If I thought maybe that was a lake of some sort, that might make things a little bit more complex. However, I can still rely on my rule, which says that water is always going to flow downhill. So if I look at my elevations here, I see I have a 500 index contour. And so I know that as you go towards the bottom of this map, the elevations are getting lower, which also tells me that the streams are flowing generally to the south. Now, unfortunately, it's not always that simple. Take a look at this map. So here I have a lake and I have two rivers, uh, one towards the, the western side and one towards the eastern side. And it's my job to figure out where these rivers are flowing. Um, and so I have lots of possibilities. Uh, they could both be flowing, say, to the east like this. They could both be flowing to the west. Um, Sapphire River could be flowing west and Garnet could be flowing east or vice versa. I don't really know. I don't have the ocean here and I don't have any elevations here. So it's very difficult for me to tell. But fortunately, there is a way. So uh, I'm going to try and figure out by using other evidence how I can tell what direction these rivers are flowing. Um, so let's start by highlighting the contour lines here. So I'm just going to highlight a portion of each contour line, um, specifically focusing on where they cross the, the rivers, the streams. Um, and what you'll notice, and you'll see this time and time again on topographic maps, is that when contour lines cross a river or a stream, they bend uh, and they, they curve, forming kind of like a V shape, which you see here in pink. Now, the reason this happens is because uh, the elevation at the bottom of a stream or river is inevitably lower than on the banks or the sides of the river. Uh, and so as a result, that affects your topography. It affects the elevation there. And so the contour lines are always going to bend, making this shape. And so this brings us to a new rule. And that rule is that when contour lines cross a stream, they bend and they form this V shape. Now, the points of the Vs are always going to point upstream or opposite the direction that the stream is flowing. So let's, uh, let's take a look at Sapphire. So Sapphire River on the left here. If I look at the bends, the curves, you'll see the Vs are pointing to the left or to the west. And so I know that that is upstream. And so that means that the river is flowing opposite that, which means in this case, the river is flowing into Gem Lake in that direction. Now let's look at the other river over on the other side, Garnet River. So for Garnet River, the bends are also pointing to the west. Uh, so to the west is upstream. So this means that the river is flowing to the east, and it would be in this case flowing away or out of Gem Lake like this. So just to sum up, the rivers are always going to flow opposite where the bends in the contour lines are pointing. 
So if you ever need to figure this out, just highlight the contour lines and the rivers flowing opposite where that bend is pointing. So let's look at one more example. So again, here I have a stream uh, and some contour lines, but I don't really know much about elevation. I know there's one index contour at 100, but I don't know which which direction is higher elevation and which direction is lower elevation. I don't see the ocean on here, and so I have to rely on my contour lines. So let's highlight our contour lines first, just like we did before. And as usual, we see that telltale sign, those bends or, or V-shapes in the contour lines. Now, if you recall, our rule says that the bends point upstream, which means the river or the stream is flowing opposite those V-shapes. So in this case, my stream is flowing like this, towards the south. And so that's how we do it. So just to sum up, rivers and streams always flow opposite the bends in the contour lines. Be sure to check out our next video in which we're going to talk about calculating gradient. And don't forget to subscribe and like on YouTube. Thanks very much.